What's up, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Variant the Podcast. I'm here with Tim Conley, as always. And Tim. What's going on? We are going to talk about my favorite villain in all of comic books and all of fiction today. It's kind of a... Magneto. <laughs> yeah, Magneto. No, he's cool. Ma it's Magneto. <laughs> Magneto right? is awesome, but he is not my favorite. <laughs> that would be the Clown Prince of Crime, the Joker. We got like a Joker-themed podcast today. We're going to cover uh, Batman 3 Jokers issue 2, and then of course uh, the Joker War storyline, which just concluded and uh, we covered on the channel recently. That's right. So... Let's start with Batman Three Jokers, and then I guess we can cap it off with uh, the finale of uh, the Joker War, since that's what that's kind of like the big one, right? That's because Joker. War, I mean, Three Jokers yeah. isn't over yet, so we kind of don't know, you know, what the climax is. But we do for the Joker War, and I loved the ending so much. Uh, but anyway, Three Jokers issue two. What did you think about this issue in comparison to the first issue? Because the first issue was very. Red Hood centric, right? right? Oh, yeah. And this one, so to, to my surprise, was actually also very Red Hood centric. I thought they were going to totally like hand it off to Batgirl, and then the the by the third final issue, it would be all about Batman and the Joker. But they are they are taking me uh, <laughs> for a journey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we both speculated that we were going to get uh, one issue was going to focus on a different hero with mm -hmm. it culminating. So we thought this one was going to be really focused and centric on Batgirl. And then the fi finale was going to focus really heavily on Batman and his relationship yep. with the, the, the Joker or the original Joker potentially. And mm -hmm. uh, to both of our surprises, they just kind of picked up where they left off and really focused on uh, Red Hood. Um, and a lot of the speculation, it, you know, it leaves you kind of wondering where it is really going because uh, Red Hood kind of, you know, in, in book one, we, we talked about it in the original episode, in book one of the three Jokers, you saw Red Hood kill one of the Jokers. And yes, after which being was just awesome. absolutely berated and antagonized, uh, you know, while he was tied up in the chair and, you know, just talking to and reminding him um, about what they did to him, but also pretty much showing him that what they intended for him was for him to basically uh, become more like the Joker himself through that incident and become a constant thorn in uh, Batman's side, which he did. Um, and so you you kind of watched it, it develop and you were wondering like, wow, how's that going to play out? He killed the, he killed one of the Jokers. How's Batman going to react? All this kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. um, but also, what is that going to mean for him as a character? And in this this issue we see him actually get kidnapped by the other two jokers. Yes. Uh, and that that's where I, I think it, for both of us, it got really interesting because they started implying that they were eyeing him to replace the joker he killed as the third joker because, you know, he's become so much like them, they say, uh, in many mm -hmm. ways. Now, ultimately, by the end of the issue, that winds up not being the case, um, but still... Uh, you're kind of left wondering, like, is it like he says he rejects the idea by the end of the issue, but you're kind of like, but does he? <laughs> I know that. Well, that's the craziest thing coming off the end of issue one. Like, I feel like if anyone was to kill the Joker, like obviously like Batman, right? Batman, but he's not going to do it because Batman doesn't kill. So right. if anyone is to kill the Joker, it makes the most sense for the Red Hood. He's the only one in the Bat right, family right. who's like, yeah, I'll kill, I'll kill people. Why aren't you guys killing people? It actually gets rid of the, the evil permanently because they're dead, right? So it makes sense for multiple reasons. Uh, the, the biggest reason uh, being of what, you know, the Joker did to Red Hood all those years ago. So that's that kind of is what puts him on the path to ultimately become the Red Hood, right? He even takes up mm -hmm. his, uh, his you know, his moniker, his former moniker, Red Hood, which gets brought up in these issues, you know, which is really, really cool. It's like, why did you take, the, why did you take my name? Why, wh what was going on there? And he's like, it's a joke, you know, it's basically I'm owning it. I'm basically not letting you get to me for killing me all those years ago. So then he becomes this Red Hood, this anti-hero. It's kind of like, you know, he's on the Bat Family side. And he's part of the Bat Family, but he's also kind of like a thorn in Batman side at the same time. Right. He's not, you know, doing things the way Batman wants them to be done in Gotham City. You know, he's very, very strict with that. So they, yeah. they, they butt heads a lot. Um, he doesn't but, follow Batman's code at all. Right, exactly. He, he's like, no, I'll, I'll kill people. But that's what, But going back to that, you know, coming full circle, you know, Joker sets him down the path to become the Red Hood and kill people and stuff like that. And then he's ultimately, we see in this issue, kills one of the Jokers. And it makes all the sense in the world. Like, if, the, if this, if it was the end and, you know, 
or they reveal that Jason Todd did kill the real Joker, I'd be I'd be completely satisfied for that with that. I feel like him, him, Batman, and Batgirl are the three characters in all of the Batman universe. I feel you know deserving of that in the sense that like they're the ones who should get that vengeance mm-hmm. if if wanted it because right. of the killing joke of Barbara Gordon obviously a death uh, in the family with Jason Todd and then everything with <laughs> Batman and the Joker yeah yeah <laughs> uh, uh, but it's just so interesting to me that you know this seems more like a red hood story to me than even a batman story at this point i mean we're more than halfway through there's only one issue yet uh left and obviously you know it, i believe in issue 2 uh, Joker says um, to Jason Todd and stuff like no, it was actually issue one. Jo- Joker says to Jason Todd, "Everything we do, or one of the Jokers rather, says to Jason Todd, everything we do is always for him, never you. Like I'm not killing you guys, paralyzing you guys, doing all this, you know, evil stuff mm-hmm. to get to you or hurt you. This is purely to get to him. It's the equivalent of like you know someone who wanted to torture me." would you know kill my family kill right. my friends right. my loved ones like that hurts more than death itself because then you're just dead right absolutely so yeah. I, fi- I find all that really really interesting that they're playing with that and how jeff johns is really diving in to the whole death in the family red hood jason todd mm-hmm. joker relationship yeah. and then even hinting you know going for about as far back to even kind of rewrite history in the sense that he's implied and kind of flat out said uh, that the Joker did this in hopes that one day he would become him or a next Joker. Now, we're not in issue three yet, so we don't know how far back these three Jokers really go or what's really going on. Yes, the Joker said he's making new Jokers and stuff like that, but we kind of, we still don't really know definitively. Yeah, we don't have any know? clarity on what that means exactly. Right. Yeah. So I'm very curious to see where, because now, like you said, we were we were guessing three issues, three Jokers, there's three members of the Bat family. You got Batman, uh, Batgirl, and Red Hood. So we're like, okay, well, if the first issue is all Red Hood, then obviously the next issue is going to probably be Batgirl, and then you have to end with Batman and the Joker because Batman and the Joker. But that's that's clearly not the case. So I am so curious to see where it goes for mm-hmm. issue, issue three. And like you said, they, this issue two did end. With Jason Todd, um, you know, not going down that path, at least not yet. And, you know, basically having a nice sentimental moment with Barbara Gordon. So much they actually kiss, which I'm like, where's Dick Grayson? Where is he? What does he think about this? <laughs> that's, right, <laughs> that's that's a that's a love triangle right there. Um, but I'm very curious to see how much that sticks or if, you know, we get some kind of twist in issue three. Could you imagine if it ends like the ending of issue three is setting up that now Jason Todd is Joker? Can you imagine that? That would be, that would be insane. That would be wild. Oh, my God. And, and that would break the internet. That would break the internet yeah. if that was the case. Yeah, that would definitely so. co- cause quite a stir amongst <laughs> fans. And it, the thing is, is that it's so open-ended, but they've also created... And I, it's kind of going back to what we were talking about a little bit there, uh, about whether or not this is like a Batman story versus a Red Hood story, and it kind of leaning. That's, that's one of the things that I actually thought was the most genius by Jeff Johns in the writing of this story is Mm -hmm. it does seem like because it is following so much the story of uh, of Red Hood and kind of they're playing out a lot of his kind of story arc uh, as far as his association with the Joker specifically. Um, But what I think is so genius about it is that it really is, even though they're focusing on the Red Hood, it really is about Batman and the Joker. Ultimately, at, Mm -hmm. at the in the end, even what they're doing between the you know, with, with red hood, it's, they're making the point very specific at, you know, to the point you made that it's always about Batman. Yes. They're really, he's really digging deeper into and, and kind of furthering the mythos, um, you know, with red hood to further the point that Joker is just obsessed with Batman and affecting mm-hmm. everything around him to generate very specific reactions and and results f- from Batman alone. So he'll do anything, he will hurt anyone as mm-hmm. long as in the end he thinks it's going to give him it's going to get Batman's attention the way that he wants. And it's it's really it's really genius in that way and and that kind of leads us to the, the the real actual end of the the issue. Uh, where it does kind of it turns it it turns from Rob you know what we're focused on with Red Hood to Batman uh, and with the introduction of Joe Chill, which was very 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 intriguing because yeah. that was in, that was introduced to us in issue two. Like after Batman's checking out a, a a crime scene investigation, he sees that fingerprints 
of the murderer belong to Joe Chill. So he goes to right. Arkham Asylum, check it out, and then he finds out that Joe Chill actually has stage four cancer. Mm-hmm. So then Barbara, you know, takes him to like the, the hospice wing and he's there. He's there. He's, you know, essentially waiting to die. And he's like, how the f- then that wasn't him. Someone stole his fingerprints, which obviously we find out by the end of it, uh, by the end of the issue. Joker somehow did that to mess with Batman, but yeah. then kidnapped Joe Chill asking like the ultimate question as the issue ends. Why did you kill Thomas and Martha Wayne? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like that, that, that is very, very, cause I'm, so I'm wondering if they're going to go as far back to rewrite like that kind of history a little mm-hmm. bit to be almost kind of pull a, a Tim Burton, 89 Batman, <laughs> you know, it's like yeah. is Joker, the one who actually killed uh, Bruce's parents. Yeah. It, it really <laughs> or at least is. responsible. And that, I think that was just such an interesting turn there because it's, you know, even with the stuff with red, Red Hood is showing you that he is very he's centrally focused on Batman. And then it leads us to this this issue, this uh, introduction or reintroduction of Joe Chill into the storyline. And I don't know if you caught this beat that I just kind of really loved. It was very small and, it you know, he passed by it very quickly. But from a character standpoint, I just kind of love mm. this moment where he goes to Joe Chill's cell and mm-hmm. he pauses and he said he starts to say, you know who I am. But he like, you know, and then he, you know, he clears his throat, like almost like Batman was yeah. nervous. Yes, for sure. Yes. I just that was loved awesome. that beat uh, for Batman as a character. The way they laid out the panels, too, mm-hmm. was very to give that like, you know, he's he's like you said, he's nervous. He's hesitant because this is the guy who started it all. Because at, the, at yeah. the core of it, Batman's not Batman without Joe Chill doing what he did. Right. Yeah. So this is this is almost like a guy who's worse than the Joker in that sense for Bruce. Right. Because yeah. he's the one who ruined his entire life and set him down this course of uh vengeance yeah so i mean but th- which is what's kind of crazy jeff john's doing right it's like when you really think about batman it's like obviously the joker but who he, who was even around before the joker right joe chill. joe chill and now he's bringing them together in this issue somehow so i'm very curious to see where that goes is the joker just being crazy and because he knows uh who batman is and is trying to mess with him or is there really something to it you know and, and even going back to the red hood thing like you said yes like on surface level, it's very much like a Red Hood story, but it's deeper than that, where it is really a Batman story, because turning Jason Todd into the Joker, someone who is Batman's partner, his his, his son, you know, right. would be the ultimate punchline, right? Yeah. Like, that would be the ultimate punchline. If someone could take your daughter, your you know, your son, your wife, and turn them completely against you and make them your arch enemy Mm -hmm. that would be Mm -hmm. that would be insane so it it is it's it's funny that like the joker does that a lot i actually kind of we'll probably talk about this when we're talking about the joker war storyline but he kind of does that in there too where everything he does isn't necessarily like on surface level directly towards batman like he's not like you know uh like physically you know harming him so much i mean he does but you know he does the ways he gets his batman is doing stuff around him like taking down the wayne fortune uh hurting you know his loved ones it's very interesting Mm -hmm. that even with different writers like it's kind of like an agreed thing where it's like the joker really gets at batman by hurting the people around him not necessarily him himself so much Mm -hmm. obviously he'll stab him and he'll kick him and they fight but like the true core of it the way he really hurts him and the joker knows it is by doing all the stuff to his loved ones and to Gotham, the people he's trying to save. Yeah. So I think that's super, super interesting because we're doing, you know, that's like Jeff Johns is doing that here where, you know, it's basically bringing up all the past with the killing joke and Jason Todd and Joe Chill. So all the stuff that's brought pain to Batman's life because of him. And then in the Joker War storyline, it's the same thing. You know, he stole Dwayne Fortune. He's taking all his toys and gadgets and he's using it against them to turn the city, you know, to to crap (laughs) which is the opposite of what batman wants right so it's really really interesting you know that all these writers kind of agree that that is the joker you know yeah there's no question and i think it you know because as we said at the outset of this episode uh it's like joker central over at dc right now for sure between the joker war three jokers and even uh the dark knight metal uh uh series um, that's just been ongoing for years, literally, that has been centered <laughs> around a Batman, uh, you know, a, a Jokerized Batman. Um, right. You know, there's just so much Joker. But between these stories, they are really, really stretching um, the 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 bound, the boundaries of this this world where the Joker is absolutely 100 percent obsessed with Bruce Wayne Batman. Um, to the point where, I mean, he literally in some of these, you know, like in the dark Knights metal, I mean, he's literally on the verge of destroying the world 
um, you know, just to make the point. (laughs) <laughs> you know what I mean? That a Jokerized, yeah, yeah. a Joker Batman hybrid is the best version of Batman, mm-hmm. you know, essentially. So it's just so many of these stories, um, you know, you're, you're just seeing that recurring theme, like you said, um, over and over again. But I, I, you know, between them, I think so far, at least, even though we're, you know, it's a three book run, right. And we're two mm-hmm. books in, um, I just really love the depth uh, from which Jeff Johns writes like there's yeah. there. I mean, there's always just such a depth to it. He really understands the continuity, the mythos of these characters. Um, and he goes deep, man. He deep dives. Scott Snyder does a lot of this too. Um, mm-hmm. But those two guys, they just really know how to, to deep dive into these characters, into the psyche of Batman, to the psyche of the of Joker, what Joker means to the Batman and vice versa. Um, and it just, it just makes for such a rich story in the end that you can pull so many different elements, like, you know, kind of like what we were talking about where it's like, it seems like it's about red hood, but it's really kind of about Batman and the Joker and, and you know, how the Joker is just obsessed with Batman. There's just that richness where there's, there's multiple layers to the story. And that for me, you know, and you, I know as well, it just makes for such a better read. Um, mm-hmm. and it also makes for better conversations cause you can kind of go on and on about, oh, like, for sure. you know, what about this or what about that? And now the introduction of Joe chill and that whole scenario and how Joe chill, um, is being interrogated in front of the world, by the way, it's on camera. He's, he's recording it and he's playing it on television. Uh, they're live and he, he's putting Joe chill on the spot, a sick Joe chill asking him, why did you kill? Why did you really emphasis on really, why mm-hmm. did you really kill Thomas and Martha Wayne. Um, and then the comic just abruptly ends. And now we have to wait for the final book at the end of the month here uh, to get our, to get our answer and see who are all these jokers? Why are they creating? Why are there multiple? Where did they come from? Um, we do in this issue, however, see one of the jokers say I'm the original. Yes. And it's, he, I believe it's the boss joker from the first issue. Right. right exactly. Yeah. And he says, I'm the original. And he says, I was running Gotham before Batman, which we was also, I thought very interesting. Um, Can you imagine if they make Joker like some kind of like immortal person in that sense? That would be wild. Be, that would be wild. I don't know if I would necessarily like that though. So yeah, I don't. I, but I don't think they really hinted at that. Either. No, you know, it would be an interesting thing. But it does. It certainly says how old he is. The, but that's what I'm saying. Like how now? What's the? Because I was always under the impression like you uh, that they were a few years apart. Like you know, Batman in his prime is like early thirties, right? Like that's usually the Batman we're reading in the, and, and me and most Batman comics, unless stated otherwise, like year one or dark Knight returns, Batman's like early to mid thirties, right? That's like the Batman reading the comic book. So you assume like the Joker's around there too, right? So you're not going to have someone, you know, in their early twenties because that's a rookie and you're not gonna have someone like in their fifties because that's like, you know, they're a very, they're veteran, right? They're almost on their way out Yeah, right, right, for right. crime fighting. So I, I'm very curious to see what that's, what that spread would be. Cause then there's lots of stuff that the Scott Snyder did with the Joker, right? With Joker mixing with all those chemicals, which healed him and stuff like that. And healed Batman at the end of, uh, Oh my God. I don't even remember the, the name of that story arc. Oh my gosh. There's so many, there's been so many Joker story arcs. <laughs> uh, Oh man, it's the one where Batman and Joker essentially kill each other at the end by Scott Snyder, and I completely End Game. I think it was Endgame, Batman Endgame. Yeah, I, right, right. I believe it was End Game. Yes. Um, so I'm I'm very curious because again, Snyder has explored all that with you know Joker having access to all these chemicals to heal him and bring him back and all that stuff. So I wonder if now that that's in DC continuity of Jeff Johns, because again he's a big continuity junkie, if he's gonna pull that back, uh, you know, and kind of go full circle. But my I did want to mention. Uh, my favorite thing in this issue is actually like the first four or five pages. You know what I mean? Like the way it just starts. Because you talked about Psyche and it reminded me of, yes, this series does that a lot. Like the first few pages of this issue, we're literally brought into one of the Joker's, you know, minds, which is really, really exactly, cool. And in, yeah. this, and in this scenario, we see the Joker coming home, uh, coming home to his wife and kid. Uh, and he's like, honey, I'm home. And we see... That, you know, it's this woman who's like clearly like the Joker's forcing her to pretend to be like right. his wife. Same thing with her her son. They clearly don't want to be there. They have to do it or the Joker's going to kill them. But, you know, he's acting out the whole like leave it to beaver type family thing. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, how was your day? Tell me, you know, tell me what happened. Here's a joke. You're feeling sad. This should make you laugh. 
But it, it really yeah. says. Meanwhile, they're terrified. Terrified of him. Terrified of him. And then the boss joker comes up. It's like, what are you doing? What are you laughing at? And he's, he's like, I'm having dinner. He's like, well, who? He's like, myself. But I think there's like just just even in that little bit of dialogue in those first few pages, there's so much you can kind of uncover there. It says a lot about the Joker where even in his dreams, like he doesn't have a real family that want to be with him. He's mm-hmm. having to force people to be with him. But yeah. it also, if you really want to dig into it, at least for me, and I'm sure probably other people, it's like, does Joker deep down really want a family? You know what I mean? He just he just knows he can't have a family. Or you can go the completely other route and be like, does he just love torturing people so much that even in his dreams and visions, he likes to have a family that's like clearly, you know, uh, he has a knife to their throat and forcing them to do things. So I, there's just lots of ways you could go and explore with this. And it just opens up such a big discussion on, you know, how the Joker is just on his daily life. Like, cause this isn't even a scenario where he's fighting Batman or trying to kill Gotham. This is just him daydreaming, just him being him. So I think that's really cool. And I would love to see a book that's kind of just like that, right? That's yeah. just the Joker everyday life. Like he's not trying to get Batman or Robin. He's just kind of going through his day. I think that would be really, really interesting. I think the closest thing we got was uh, that Joker story, that graphic novel from several years back. Um, but, Something like that would be really, really cool. Just even like a one shot. It's just Joker, like you know, from breakfast to lunch. What happens? <laughs> a day in, in the a life. Day. Yeah, yeah, dude. That would because he's the Joker. You know, it wouldn't be normal. It would be so yeah, interesting. No, you, be there's crazy. so many things you could play with. Yeah. <laughs> and even like how the, he sees the world around him through his psychotic yes. lens, right? Like, Correct. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I will say though, the, the one of the things I, I actually, you know, really found that opening sequence uh, super interesting. It seemed like it was more than just daydreaming because mm. he's sitting in this like even after uh, the, the the second the you know the boss joke or the criminal uh, even mm. after he approaches him and he says you know hey what are you doing back here and he kind of comes to and you see him he's sitting at a, the same table in front of the same windows with a mannequin and a bear and when he asks him what he's doing and he says I'm having dinner or whatever there's like this darkness this sadness that comes over him right like just saying Mm -hmm. but the 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 criminal says to him i believe um he tells him like you're wasting time coming back here and as if he was going back to something right and it's you know what he's envisioning in his head what he's you know imagining is the same house the same you know the same dinner table or whatever um but now you know go leaping back into reality it's like broken down and destroyed and he's sitting with like a mannequin Rather than, you know, this terrified, you know, wife and child, uh, he's sitting with a mannequin and, a, you know, a ripped up teddy bear or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but when he, when the, the boss joker goes to like chuck down the, you know, throw the mannequin on the ground, he actually gets angry and says, don't touch, you know, don't touch her. Mm-hmm. Right. So it's almost like there was something very personal there that like he was actually reliving something that was important to him. Um, especially when that moment of like sadness. So that made that whole scene for me, you know, a little bit of a, okay, this has something to do with who this Joker is and where he came from somehow. Right. And he's maybe inserting the new version of himself into, you know, what used to be or something to that effect. Oh, that's a very interesting, that's a very interesting way to look at it as if, since that's not the OG Joker, it's almost like, his life before is crossing over into his Joker life now. Exactly, because that's the comedian. That's an interesting way to look at it. See, that's the kind of thing I like about comics and good writing in general, because they're not telling you, right? So you can kind of take it, everyone can kind of interpret it differently, right? right I think that's right. a good a good a sign of a good writer in general, where like the Absolutely. best movies and just, you know, you know, in general are things you could have a discussion about where it's like, well, I thought it meant this. Well, I thought it meant this. So it's kind of cool that we're both giving like our own interpretation of what that meant. Yeah. You know, I, I, that's how, that's, I think that's a really good sign uh, of a good story where you, you want to be able to have a discussion about it and be like, well, I interpreted it this way because no one wants things just like, like expositional dialogue. You want to yeah, be able yeah. to like talk about it and kind of figure it out. You know what I mean? It's kind of like good stories are almost like puzzles <laughs> in a exactly, sense, right? Yes. <laughs> so uh, that's, and it, what's funny too is like, again, this is only like what? three pages, four pages. Yeah, just for And pages, there's yeah, so yeah. much to take away from it. And then even, who knows, like if you, what you're saying is correct and we get some revelations in issue three, this could even come full circle in some way. You know what I mean? Exactly right, yeah. And and then again, that just goes back to what I was saying before uh, of, you know, I just love the depth with which these guys write. 
Um, mm-hmm. You know, Johns and Snyder and and, the, and some of these guys that who they really are fans and they dig really deep or they've yeah. been writing the character for a really long time and they just pick up on all these little beats or nuances that they can then expand on. And it creates this richness of the of the story and, and also elaborates on the character's mythos um, and even the psych- psychological makeup of the character and giving that character more depth going forward. I just love that stuff. And I think that John's is doing a great job with that here. Oh yes. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I think I, I've made it very known personally. He is like top three favorite writers for me in right. comics. I mean, he's, and again, it all goes back to, I say it all the time, but I'm a big continuity junkie and he clearly is too. Like he said it several times in interviews and podcasts, like he goes back, like everything he does ties to like some kind of legacy of that character which is why i hate when you see writers they ignore the legacy i'm like the only reason why we care about these characters is because of their legacy like don't ignore it uh, but all you know you don't have to like keep rehashing but just add to it or make the old stuff new somehow again like you said earlier like scott snyder does that stuff so well you know so well at the same time where you know the court of owls he made it seem like they were always there i feel like i always bring that up but i love that kind of stuff where Mm -hmm. you know donny cates is another writer who's done that with like venom and like their origin he's like no this is what you thought it was this this is what it actually is and this is where it all started and it's like you mean when i read that panel that was actually this and it kind of you know it the new fans will love it and then the diehards have been reading for years you'll you know you'll blow their minds at the same time. She's like, oh my God, I remember reading that issue 10 years ago. I didn't know that was this. So again, and and I think it's, you know, no surprise that all the writers that are doing this, Donny Case, Jeff John, Scott Snyder, so on and so forth, are some of the most popular writers out. Yeah, without a doubt. And, you know, and with that, like in another piece of this particular story where you see that, I'm talking about, you know, obviously Three Jokers book two, um, right. is where you see Batman react to the news that Jason killed the joker yes he doesn't react like you know that barbara's you know really concerned you know even jason you know doesn't know how batman's going to react but instead of reacting in anger or or, you know in any kind of like a disciplinarian type fashion um he reacts with compassion you know he he feels bad he knows and he even corrects barbara because barbara's Mm -hmm. like you have to do something and he's like look you don't understand what the joker did to him like you know He's hurting. I can't, you know, I'm not going to judge him that way. You know, we're not going to, I'm not just going to let him run rough shot, but you know, we need to help him. Yeah. And then they have this interaction where they finally get to Jason, you know, and after, you know, he's been taken by the two jokers and, you you know, beaten, you know, further and they find him bloody and naked, uh, you know, tied up in a room, um, you know, they take him and and Jason just lashes out at, at Batman And just, it, you know, that you see the depth of this interaction between what Jason blames, you know, everything kind of comes full circle and you see Jason just fully turn on Bruce and say, you know, this is your fault. You did this to me. You led me down this path. You're the reason that I'm sitting here tied up to a chair naked and bloody, right? Mm-hmm. This is all because of you. And, you know, Barbara kind of comes to him and, and calms him down. But instead, again, you see kind of that father figure come out in Bruce to where he's also, he's kind of, you know, dealing with and reconciling with, you know, everything that's happened and what what has happened to him. And Bruce himself blames himself, he even says it. You know, I, I'll never forgive myself, basically, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, you just, the depth of those relationships and how, how it's being uh, kind of written into this story, but there's so many elements that he's touching on um, and very, and relatively speaking, in a very short story run, by the way, mm-hmm. uh, and he's really pulling on some of these strings um, that's really working. Um, and, and by the end, you see Bruce tell him, like, you know, you, we just want you to get better, basically. And he he goes off to, you know, save the world as usual. But, you know, he's he wants to he first and foremost wants to make sure that Jason is OK and look, looked after. Yeah, it's very, it's a very interesting thing. Again, that's why the Red Hood is, you know, again, like I feel like Dick Grayson, Nightwing is like, you know, he's Dick Grayson, he's Nightwing. But Red Hood, I think just as far as the story goes, it's so much more compelling, which is why I I like him so much. And he's possibly my favorite, you know, uh, Mm -hmm. ally to Batman just because it's so complex. And like even in that, right, where he's like, he's blaming Batman saying, you put me down this path, you did this to me, blah, blah. It's like, yes, 
But like, did he? Because at the same time, Batman was always being like, Jason, don't do that, Jason. Come back, rope it back, Jason. Right. You know what I mean? Right. So it's one of those things, too, where I feel like they could even explore in, in future issues. Like, look, man, at the same time, like, you were you were going AWOL all the time. Like, what, what am I supposed to do? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, he just kind of had that personality because he had a crappy he had a crappy childhood. He's basically, you know, an orphan living by himself and all that stuff. So... It it's really really interesting though to see it like come because this is like years out right so it's yep. clearly still driving Jason because he says in this comic he's like because I the reason why he's the red hood is because he's owning it he's accepting it but this shows it's like is he though is he really you know what I mean yeah. and, and to be fair this all happens after you know the two jokers stripped him naked tied him to right. a chair and were beating him over the head yeah. with a crowbar like so he's they're essentially kind of making him relive. Uh, what he went through the first time all those years ago yeah but it's just it's just you know pretty crazy and you know what's crazier than that is once they take uh, barbara gordon and batman take him uh to barbara's house the batgirl's house or apartment rather um and uh, jason gets out of the shower they start kind of having a sentimental moment right Mm -hmm. where barbara even says to him like look i know we didn't tell you all these years ago but you know we wish we could have been there we wish we're sorry we wish we could have been there for you and he says you know you guys never told me that before, which is a really, really touching moment and kind of crazy when you think about it, because if you haven't read all the Batman comics or, or stories with Red Hood and stuff, you know, you would just assume that, of course, they said that. But we find out here they never said that. It's like to right. me, I was like, how did you yeah. never say that to the man? Yeah. <laughs> like, what yeah. the heck? So it kind of explains Jeff Johns, I feel like, is using that to kind of, mot- you know, again, getting real deep into the character, explain and push why he's doing all this stuff. It's like the guy didn't even get a freaking mm-hmm. like. Dude, I'm sorry, man. We we messed up. They get, but it kind of makes sense at the same time because Bruce isn't one to apologize or do any of that sentimental stuff. He's just yeah. kind of like you give him like a nod, like you're back. All right, let's do this. But he's not gonna be like, look, I'm sorry, bro. <laughs> you know yeah, what I the mean? Best you're gonna get is like, welcome back. Right. So it's really cool to see that he finally got that here, which is what ultimately led to them kissing here. But but Barbara quickly regrets it. She shuts it down. Yeah. It's really interesting that we're kind of exploring. We're kind of we're getting a lot more of all these characters history in this issue like we're getting all the little nuances and stuff through like oh i can't believe that wasn't said or oh i can't believe this happened Mm -hmm. so very very interesting stuff and again being that red hood is one of my favorites i am loving the story but also again it's all really we're getting all these revelations with red hood and stuff but it's all really to get at batman so i'm so curious to see what issue three, what's going to go down in that issue? Because, again, that's when uh, we're setting up Joe Chill with the Joker, with Batman. What's going to, is you know, the Red Hood is going to go back out on the streets with Batgirl. So right. what's going to happen? What's but more, going to happen? It's going to happen, especially with the Joe Chill one is freaking crazy, too. Because, again, that's literally, yeah. literally why Bruce is Batman. Yeah, you an know what incredible I mean? place to to leave us. And, yeah. then, you know, again, I, I, I also am just loving all the little beats that we're getting these little hints at something bigger, something broader, you know, kind of like what we talked about, about their early, you know, just the first couple pages of him kind of in a daydream of some sort, um, mm. you know, looking at that. And then he, even when he's, they're beating uh, Jason, right? They have him in the room and they're asking, and one of the jokers says to him, I'll, I'll tell you a little secret. It hurts when I laugh. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was cool. Right? <laughs> really cool dialogue. And, but also like, that I for me that was interesting. That was like okay, you're telling us that for a reason, uh, you know. At least that's how I felt when I was reading it. And then you know because even at the end, uh, he says they say to Joker when they start beating him with the crowbar, you know, they say, "Tell me, Jason, does it you know does it hurt when you laugh?" Because they're trying so to cool. see like it, it's are you going to be one of us or not, you know? And, and which mm-hmm. in the end, you know, they say you know we're disappointed because you, we thought it would be you, but you know you're just not ready yet or sort of that sort of a thing. It does seem like little stuff like that is important too because right, that's you what even I mean, have yeah. re, you even have Red Hood respond to it. He basically says something is that that mean you are the real Joker, like you're him, like mm-hmm. you know because they're all they're also trying to figure out because the Bat family doesn't know you know if they're all if they've all been Jokers forever or like. Is there only one Joker? Because when yeah. when we found out that Bat, the the Joker is making Jokers, it was the Joker saying this to the other two Jokers. So the Bat family still has no freaking idea what's happening. So again, 
just very curious for issue three. <laughs> yeah, man. It, it, I can't wait to see how, how they wrap all this up. Honestly, it doesn't, I don't know if you feel the same, but uh, you know, at the end of this book, I, I can't, I didn't get the vibe like, okay, we're only one issue away. Like, yeah. So I'm, like, how are they going to wrap it up? Right. How are they going to bring this all, all together, you know, with only one issue left? And also mm-hmm. how big is that issue going to be? <laughs> yeah. I know these issues are already like 48 pages of actual story. Right. So can you imagine it's, we're going to get like a, an 80, 80 page book. It's going to be like $20. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be, it's going to be interesting, but I, I definitely look forward to seeing how he wraps all this up, especially by leaving us with uh, everything with Joe chill. And that final question, you know, it's, you know, it's time to confess. Why did you kill Thomas and Martha Wayne? So I, I, I really want to see the answer to that question. And I'm curious to see what the bigger, you know, what this is going to mean for Batman and, and Red Hood and Batgirl and the whole Bat family going forward, right? Because the three jokers now this is done under the black label, you know, branch of DC, right. given right. the prestige format and, you know, exercise and all. But this all started in, you know, Jeff, when Jeff Johns was writing Justice League five years ago in, Je- in the Dark Side War. Like that's how this all mm-hmm. started. Yep. So this is, you would one would assume because of that, this is main continuity. Now, we've had lots of shifts in DC over the years, so maybe it's it's not but i haven't heard otherwise so you know it's main continuity so what is that going to mean for the joker going forward because you got scott snyder doing all this stuff oh yeah. you know with yeah. with the joker then you have the joker and the joker yeah. uh war storyline with james tynan's run so also like when does this happen you know what i mean like as far right. as timeline goes before joker war after joker war you know before uh this whole death metal after death metal like there's lots of lots of questions because again, continuity junkie. I need to know when and where and what this means. <laughs> that's like one of the things that's actually bothering me about all of it cumulatively is that mm-hmm. they're not doing a very good job of explaining to you, okay, where's the continuity tie-ins yeah. here? Like yes. you know, th- this has to all loop in somewhere because, like you said, yes, it's on the black label, but it the way that they're writing the story, it does make you feel like, you know, this should have some level of continuity here, Mm -hmm. you know, and we should probably know that by now. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's more than halfway done. And I don't mean just three Jokers. I'm talking about Joker War, what, you know, what Tynan's doing, what Mm -hmm. Snyder's doing, and what Johns is doing. Um, And it's just a lot going on all at the same time. It's a weird thing though, right? Because like the writer, whoever's writing the Batman book has the reins, like, Whoever's right. doing the Batman book, which at this point in time is James Tynan, he's top dog. So every mm-hmm. other title has to follow what he's doing. Right. Same thing once, you know. So I, you know, I wonder what that is. Cause when Scott Snyder was on the Batman book for, you know, all those years, it was a lot easier. Like everyone knew everything spin out, spun out, like, you know, the Nightwing books, the Detective right. Comics. Like you all you knew where you were, and it all went back to the his Batman title. And the same thing should be happening here. So yeah. even though Death Metal is DC's huge event, you know, it has to tie back to Batman. And any anything that happens with Batman, you know, Tynan has should be the head of the ship because he's writing the Batman title. He's, you know, that is the book for the Batman book and the title for DC period. So I'm I'm very, very curious. Like you said, it's been easier in the past. I know that's kind of a complaint with comics in general, but I feel yeah. like you were saying this one's a little more crazy than usual, but I think that's because of everything going on with Warner and DC, where I don't think they yes. necessarily know, especially with death metal, you know, having to tie into doomsday clock when, you know, Jeff Johns clearly set up a different path, but now they're having to shift things. Yeah. So I don't, it's, it's a little wonky right now. <laughs> it kind of feels like a little bit like there, because there is a lot going on over there uh, mm-hmm. at DC. I, it kind of feels a little bit like, you know what, we're just going to let, you know, good writers with good story ideas, write right? Their and figure it out later. And figure, yeah, exactly right. And just figure it out as we go, sort of a deal. Because so far, I'm not seeing a ton uh, of of continuity between the stories. in in the In the three Jokers book, we see that uh, you know the Joker or the Jokers are are dipping a whole bunch of people. They've got they're kind of like soaking people, almost like they're marinating, <laughs> <laughs> like chicken. In, yeah, in the chemicals. Um, you know, and jokerizing them. And you see a very similar thing going on in uh, the Joker war where, you know, the Joker is, you know, but he's doing it with dead bodies. He's digging up a whole bunch of carcasses and we'll get mm-hmm. into all that in here in just a yep. second, but he's jokerizing all kinds of stuff. And like these hordes that are attacking Batman uh, and in book two of, of three Jokers, you see that sort of thing, except for in this case, they're not dead. They're, they're no. they, well, at least they're on their way, but they, they weren't originally. 
So there's some differences, but you're seeing similar things. But in terms of continuity, like the, I'm not seeing any tie-ins. Are you? No, I mean, you know, to that point, like in the, you know, Joker using the stuff in the Joker War storyline, he says it's the designer's tech, right? Like it's whatever mm -hmm. the designer to, you know, make them zombies, and then I guess the Joker just Jokerizes That's them right, after yeah. the fact. Uh, I don't know. It's again, I, I'm a big continuity person. I'm the guy like. I'll reread something just a panel five times. And I'm like, that doesn't line up with this. And then I'll go back and try to find issues to be like, oh, okay, does that make sense? Or does it not make sense? Because it just irks me. Right, <laughs> like, I just yeah. need to know. <laughs> yeah, I'm with you. Um, so, so, yeah, with this, like, but I feel like it's not even like, they're not even hinting to each other. I almost feel like they're just kind of like one-offs from each other. You know what exactly, I mean? Like, there's right. nothing to even connect them to. It's just like, this is my Joker story. This is my Joker story. And this is my Joker story. I'm not going to mention any of the others. You know what I mean? So I I don't know. <laughs> I'm kind of feeling a little bit like, and we can use this to segue into our the, the Joker War story as a whole. Um, right. But I'm kind of feeling a little bit like three Jokers is going to be the odd man out. And it's going to be a one-off. It's going to be its own storyline. Um, and it's going to live in its own kind of like the Doomsday Clock story. Because they they seem to have been walking away from all of that. Mm -hmm. uh, especially with what Snyder's doing with uh, the you know Dark Knights and that ongoing story. So I'm my my this is at least my theory of it is that we're going to get um, a timeline where they're going to tell us, okay, the dark Knights storyline happens at this point in the timeline. And then what Tynan is doing is happening in this timeline uh, over here. And so they're they're, they're It's all in continuity, but it's separate timelines um, for sure. Th that's what it's kind of seeming like. And the three jokers will just be kind of a one-off. I'm hoping, you know, it's weird. Cause I'm wondering if, it, you know, it'll, it'll be kind of like the killing joke in that sense where, you know, it was this one off and years later it's brought into continuity. Although this is different because this started in the main continuity. Again, it started in the Justice League book, right? When right, Jeff Johns was right. on it, which is in main DC continuity. And then right. now we're getting it on uh, DC Black Label. So, I mean, it would be, I don't know. It'd just be kind of weird to kind of ignore it, especially since it's literally the best selling book for DC in like years. Like, I think there oh, was yeah. like three, 300,000 yeah. pre orders, which for today's comics is insane. So yeah. uh, I, I don't even I, I don't see how they could ignore it in that sense. You know what I mean? Because well, the, the reason I say it mainly is because it seems very much like they're going in a different direction from the course that John set them on with Rebirth. That is true. Yeah. Right. It seems like they're going in a very separate direction. And there's even a lot of controversy surrounding Jeff Johns himself now. Oh, yeah. Um, and, yeah. It, you know, it, there's a high likelihood that they're going to be separating themselves from him or distancing themselves from him even further. Um, you know, we don't know that for sure, but there is that chance. Um, so mm -hmm. it's like with all of those things on the table, it kind of that's that's kind of the vibe that I'm getting anyway. Yeah. I mean, you know, like, like I feel like everything with the world of comics right now, I guess we just have to wait and see, especially with DC, because DC is kind of like in flux right now. I mean, they have several. I mean, off the bat that you have three Jokers, Joker War storyline, which was, was doing really well. And then Death Metal obviously is doing really well. So they have. Uh, uh, you know, quite a few books that are doing really well. People say DC or comics, they're not doing anything. It's like, are you kidding me? Even Josh yeah, Williamson on joking. The Flash just wrapped up an epic freaking like, what, 100 issue run on The Flash, which introduced a bunch of new characters. You know, Godspeed did awesome uh, uh, origins and kind of retellings and expanded the myth mythos of Reverse Flash and all that stuff. So, I don't know what people are talking about when they're saying like comics suck right now because there's a lot of good stories, especially for like the A-list characters, you know, like the the Flashes and Batmans of the world. Yeah, in fact, there's been so much going on on the Batman side and on the Marvel in the Marvel universe. There's been so much, you know, you've had you know with all the work that Donny Cates has been doing. Oh yeah, that, you know, people have kind of I, I won't say forgot because they're still selling. Uh, but you know, we haven't over on our side on Variant, we haven't even really been able to talk much about uh you know what hickman has been doing with the x-men you know universe, yep. universe and all of that um you know so there's there's a lot going on in comics like you said um in fact i venom, would say thor comics is, yeah venom and thor that's all spider-man sin eater's been doing, doing really there. good with spider-man yeah, yeah there's a there's just a ton of really good stuff coming out of the comics i, I totally agree in fact i would say there we're in a better place in terms of the actual stories we're getting from comics than we've been in maybe a couple of years. 
So yeah, I don't. Uh, people say that all the time. It's like comic sucker, and I'm like, well, what are you reading? <laughs> like, there's a, <laughs> yeah. especially for the big two. There's got a lot of if you you know if you like any of the Avengers or Justice League characters, there's a lot of options right now. A ton, a ton. <laughs> yeah, and we didn't. That's not even to mention that uh, Immortal Immortal Hulk is still ongoing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So very very interesting. But now now that we've ranted for almost an hour <laughs> about three Jokers, <laughs> <laughs> it's time to move on to uh, the Joker War storyline, which. I said it in the videos we covered of this. It's one of my favorite Batman or Batman Joker stories in recent years. I thought it was very, very well done. Yes. And the way now there's going to be spoilers because I feel like there's no way to truly give thoughts without spoiling the entirety. So be warned. We're about to spoil the life out of this story. Right. And I'm going to jump right into it because the ending. So the base for the quick and the quick summary version of it is basically the Joker uh, steals Batman's fortune and turns Gotham against him, essentially, right? He doses him with drugs, makes him hallucinate. Uh, you know, <laughs> Bruce has seen Alfred uh, this whole time, who's dead, because remember in Tom King's Batman run, Bane killed mm-hmm. him. So he's, you know, he's talking to, to Alfred throughout the issues. But, and while meanwhile, Joker is ruling Gotham. He's like up in a penthouse, you know, with all these gold chains. He's turned all the Batmobiles and Batplanes, like, all Jokerized, given like his thugs and Gotham permission to go crazy using all Batman's tech and basically burn it to the ground, all the way for it to go to the last issue, issue 100, all to find out this wasn't like the true plan, right? You would think like, oh, he's just trying to destroy. Exactly. It. This was not like the true, the true, true plan to just destroy and you know Gotham. The true, true plan was to tell Batman that he's never gonna be happy. Which was the craziest thing to me is like, look, because this by the end of the by the end of the story, Joker gets this future bat suit that Bruce was one day gonna wear to like, you know, make Gotham the metropolis, right? Where it's bright and vibrant. There's you know, there's not much crime at all. We even got a a flashback or a, you know, a, a not a flashback. We got like a a, a possible future sequence in mm-hmm. one of the issues where you see Batman, you know, in a brand new Gotham in his futuristic, uh, his Tron bat suit, as I call it, because it kind of looks like that. Uh, the Joker, we see, takes it, Jokerizes it, and then, you know, in the end of issue 100, starts ripping it off, saying, it's like, it's all about this suit. This is the suit you were going to wear when you did it all. You finally saved Gotham. You were happy yep. with all your Robins. You have your love Catwoman at your side. There's basically no crime. So it's all about this suit. I was just planting the seeds in the city to ruin all that, to make sure you're never gonna be happy. And I'm gonna do that by turning the two things that Gotham, the only two things in Gotham that people have hope in, which is Wayne Enterprises and Batman. I'm going to turn Wayne Enterprises against them, which he, which he did. He showed the city that they're not going to help you. And then he also showed the city showed the city that Batman can't help them because, you know, he's only one dude. So how is he going to be everywhere at once? And he was, you know, dealing with his own stuff. So he literally did all this just to be like, yeah, I don't care if you beat me up, throw me, throw me in jail. I already did what I needed to do. I already made sure that this city is going to hate you and you're never going to be happy. I thought that was the coolest thing because it's crazy because he gets locked up, you know, all that stuff. Uh, Obviously, he gets away at the end, but it's like one of those things where like Batman wins and the the Bat family, Nightwing and everyone stop all the killings in the city. But like they don't win. Like if anything, it's actually worse because it's like, oh, you just insured the next like (laughs) decades. You know, you just undid all the work I did. So I ain't going to be happy anytime soon. This sucks for me. And I thought that was the brilliance of this story because it's one of those things where you, you know, you expect like, oh, this is going to happen. He's going to beat him, blah, blah, blah. But it was it was so like nuanced in the sense where I wasn't really even expecting it. It It's one of those things like as I'm reading it, I'm like, oh, this is more genius. It's like. It's like you don't get it, man. Like we're in the aftermath already. This is like the de- your your yes. bat family. The, we're going through the, the debris. This such is just great, it's, it's de- right. It's like it's yeah, that was done. such a great run of dialogue there. <laughs> yeah, it because he goes on this you know several pages of dialogue. It's like it is done. I've already put everything into motion. Gotham, you know, everyone in Gotham is going to turn against you. They're not going to believe in Wayne Enterprises, and in turn, they're not going to believe in Bruce Wayne and in Batman. And it's just like this domino effect where it's like again. You know, Gotham has always been a bad place, but when Enterprises and Batman and all that stuff would help fix it and and bring it back up. But now, you know, it's gone. He showed that he he literally says and the Joker literally says in there that he showed Gotham City that Wayne Enterprises and Bruce is just like every other evil corporation in the world. And they're only they're not going to save you. They're only, you know, out to save themselves. Which I was like, wow, that's you're bringing it to the real world, too, but also sticking (laughs) it to Batman. (laughs) 
<laughs> I thought I thought it was brilliant. <laughs> it, it really was. I, I thought uh, you know because we were both a little bit unsure going into kind of the run up to Joker War. Yeah, we were both a little bit unsure. Like, okay, how's this gonna? How's he gonna do? How is this all gonna kind of come together? Where is it going? And you know, I, I totally agree. I think Tiny has just done a fantastic uh, job so far with Batman, and obviously he's not done yet. He's still going. Uh, but to this point, uh, just everything from uh, the the new characters he's introduced. I, dude, he's already introduced four characters. He's only been on the issue for 15 issues. I mean, he's only been on the title 15 issues. And every single one of them is compelling mm-hmm. and well-written into the stories and into Batman's world. Um, it's just been really, really well done. Um, the thing that I took away from the Joker War story the most and this is what I thought was, it was the most well thought out aspect of it is how he used this story and what the Joker was doing to Batman, uh, kind of to your point earlier, you know, when you first were explaining it, um, how the Joker, it seems like he's just using Wayne Enterprises to cause chaos, but then you find out in the end, it's this whole other thing. And I loved how they use this for the Joker to point out to him how fragile all of the work he has done really was. It Mm -hmm. reminded me of the killing joke in that way. Right. That whole concept of all it takes is one bad day. Yeah. 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 Right. And it was, it almost felt in a lot of ways, it felt like a tip of the hat to that in some ways Mm -hmm. um, of that idea of, you know, I'm going to show you that your, you, you know, your fantasy of, you know, being able to retire in this very peaceful, very, you know, happy and uh, corrected and fixed Gotham um, is just as much a fantasy uh, and a dream uh, that is never going to come to reality as me being Batman. <laughs> right? right? Because yeah, in the yeah, end, yeah. what's he doing? He's standing there dressed in a Jokerized bat suit, the very bat suit that Batman was going to wear, as he said, when his work was done. That was going to be his final bat suit. Um, and from the hints that they gave us, uh, you know, it seemingly is the most high tech bat suit Batman has ever created. Right. Um, he even says to him, like, if you can hack that, and Batman says to him at the end, he's like, if you can hack that bat suit, you know, you can, <laughs> you can disable, you can disable the bomb this bomb or something. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but it, I loved, loved the, that element of Joker coming in and just blowing up everything Batman has done to that point undoing it literally making him and him and the bat family start from scratch and using this this concept of showing him just how vulnerable uh all of his work and how how vulnerable society is and how one person uh can't hope to to correct all of these things that it takes more than that Mm -hmm. and at the same time and this is the other part that i really loved because of that we're also following Bruce as he, as a character, is going through this journey of self-discovery and figuring out the things that he had been doing wrong all along the way. The mm-hmm. way he kept a lot of the Bat family at, at you know arm's length. A lot of the things that had happened to him over the years, including the, the elements of the, you know his parents getting killed and starting there and all the way up and how it made him into this person that just for all of his strength, for all of his intelligence, for all of his high tech, uh, you know, uh, uh, gadgets and everything like that. Um, it made him into a person that was not capable of achieving what he, his whole purpose of being actually was supposed to be right. For sure. And that he had to himself evolve and change and correct and, and, and come face to face with his own demons, um, and start doing some things differently. If he ever really hoped to achieve the kind of future for Gotham um, that he's always wanted. So that whole element, those two pieces, I just thought were so well written into this story. And, you know, by the end, you know, you see Batman standing, you know, sitting in a room with, uh, we really kind of haven't gone into the the aspects with Harley Quinn, but. Uh, that's the, that's the next thing I was going to bring up. That was, that was, yeah, yeah. (laughs) I'm bringing that up right away. (laughs) (laughs) But we see Batman, you know, standing there. And one of the things that he says is, you know, I realize now that, you know, I think I know what I have to do to be a better man and a better Batman. Mm-hmm. 
you know, and he says he's going to try. And, you know, one of the rare times that we actually see Batman smile in a comic. Right. <laughs> you know, and it, even still, it's like a little smirk. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So but all those things together, those are I think for, as far as like the final takeaways and stuff like that, those were two of the, my favorite aspects of this story. Um, and it kind of dives into what we've had full podcasts about about what makes Batman and the Joker such compelling characters and such a compelling rivalry. Um, and I think he did a really great job mm-hmm. of highlighting that through this story. Yeah, I love the self-discovery aspect that Bruce had in here because, you know, a big a big part of this uh, story was Batman talking to himself, but in his hallucinations, he was talking to Alfred, right? And then at the end, right. Alfred's basically like, you know, Bruce is, Alfred tells him, like, I got to go now. And he's like, how can I do this without you? He's like, that's the thing. Master Bruce, you have been doing it without me. Without me, I'm dead. You're here. You you are doing this alone. You know what I mean. And it was just yeah. really he even says moment. something to the effect of like, "This is what that looks like." <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 And he, you know, he's he basically like he's telling you know it's Alfred saying it to him, but it's really Bruce saying it to himself. He's like, "Look, right. man, you know, you're not going to be able to save everyone. That's just a fact. You have to accept that you you can't you didn't save me." Uh, you can't save them and you won't save everyone, right? You just have to take that, right. you know, you just have to accept that. But it, with every win, you're, you know, you're beating death. You're beating evil. You know what I mean? Like you have to look at the has- the the glass half full kind of thing. It's like, don't just quit because then, you know, then no nothing's going to happen. But every time you win, you're saving a life or you're, you're making someone, you know, you're doing something better. So I thought that was really, really cool. You know, that whole thing where it's like, oh, wow, where yeah, yeah. are we going to see a Batman who's like maybe not as hard on himself at that point And, you know, or just, kind you know, open up his ranks, which he did. And here he's finally like, all right, I can't do this alone. And we see like, you know, pretty much all the Bat family there helping him, you know, save the rest of Gotham while he's fighting with the Joker. Uh, but the craziest thing and one of the biggest themes within you know the story especially towards the end and we're definitely going to see it going forward with clown hunter uh because it's very prominent in clown hunter's origin we're actually going to do an episode on his origin uh here shortly uh but harley quinn is like look batman i'm gonna kill him i'm going with you i'm gonna kill the joker like that's it like enough is enough he needs to die and batman's obviously like no not gonna happen she's like no you don't understand this is gonna keep happening this is it this is you know the last straw if you don't kill him i'm going to and you know she doesn't Eventually, she doesn't. But, but I love uh, how she bargains with him. Yeah, the she's bargaining. Whole time. Like, okay, I'll make you a deal. If you're about to die, then I'll kill him. But not until then. How about that? And he's like, no. right. And then, <laughs> and then ultimately, when it looks like Joker has the upper hand, Harley's there to like, quote unquote, save the day. She shoots him through the head, and a few panels that make you believe for a second that, oh my god, they just killed a Joker. Only for it to be revealed on the next page or so. It's like, yeah, she shot him through the head, but she clearly missed his brain because he's still alive. So now he's just blind yeah, in the right he's, eye. He's talking to her, so I guess he's Yeah, alive. yeah. <laughs> which which is pretty crazy. And she's like, and Joker's like, look, uh, you missed. That wasn't a kill shot. And she's like, yeah, that's because the kill shot's not going to come from me. It has to come from him. At right. which point she pulls bombs out of her bag, duct tapes one to herself, and then one to the Joker and tells Batman is like, you got to make a choice. You only have enough time to save one of us. And I'm going to run far away. So you either chase to save me or you save the Joker. Basically giving Batman like, look, who are you going to choose? You're going to kill the guy who's literally made your life a living hell or me. And I thought that was – that's brought up to the point where you said earlier where he looks at, at the Joker – you know, first he's like, Harley, you can't do this, yada, yada. But she runs away. She's gone. She, right, yeah. <laughs> she's gone. And then he looks at the Joker. He's like, you freaking hacked my bat suit, which is supposed to be like the most advanced one yet. I'm pretty sure you could disable, you know, you could you could deal with this bomb. You could deactivate Yeah, good luck. It. Yeah. <laughs> um, which obviously the Joker does. They don't find his body and they find the bomb deactivated and all that stuff. But, you know, it kind of brings, it kind of goes back to the clown hunter too, where, you know, Harley's making the point, like, we have to end this. Like, how many wars, how many deaths, how many of these massacres are we going to have before you just right. kill the guy? You know what I mean? It's like, do you understand yep. how many families and lives you would have saved over the years if you just would have, like, killed him? And How many times has someone said that to Batman? Yes, right? the Clown Hunter. I don't want to give it away too much here because we're going to do an episode on it. But right. that's actually what the Clown Hunter's origin is based in. It's based right, exactly in something that the Batman, you know, it's based in a death that the Clown Hunter has with his with his family. And mm-hmm. he's like, look, if you were if you were just killed him all these years ago, I wouldn't have to be become the Clown Hunter and everything would be good. But since you're not going to do it, someone's got to do it. 
You know what right. I mean? And it's it's this theme that, you know, he's playing, Tynan's playing with it with Harley. Now he's playing it with Clown Hunter, playing with it with Clown Hunter. And I'm so, and it, you know, it says to be continued after that with as far as the Clown Hunter's origin. So right. it's clearly going to keep going forward. So I'm like, how is this going to end? And then, especially with Batman saying, I know how to be a better Batman. Like, you know, we could assume what that means, but what does that really mean? You know what I mean? Yeah. Is he finally going to do it? Is he finally accepted? All right. Well, maybe my role's stupid. <laughs> I'm going to kill the clown. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> well, Harley even says to him, Harley even says to him at one point, she's just like, you know, you, you're you talking to the wrong girl if you think that he's not dangerous. Yeah. You're trying to tell me that he's not dangerous in Arkham. Mm-hmm. Which like, I thought was know, a brilliant nod to like B Taz and her, you know, the whole like, her whole origin. Yeah. yeah so, yeah. but it, it's just, it really did play off that a lot. It, it touched on that a lot of like, if Batman's rules were a little bit different, how many lives would have been saved? How much mm-hmm. chaos could have been saved and all of that? But then it kind of begs the question of would Batman have ever reached the place where he is now, where he's, he's starting to reconcile with some of his own issues, uh, to where maybe he can actually do something that's maybe more long lasting. Cause Joker isn't the only thorn in his side Mm-mm. in Gotham, right. Or, or for Gotham, I should say. Um, so it's, it's, you know, it's, it's a really, it's, it's that whole, you know, the constant wrangling with these really interesting characters that they've created with Batman and the Joker and their psyches and the roles that they play in this world. Um, that it just makes it really interesting because you can just go back and forth of like, okay, well, would Batman have been this or would he would he have become that if it wasn't for this and that horrible thing that happened? And it's, it's really fun. It's almost like Tynan brought in like the fan question, right? Because everyone, a lot of people ask, it's like, well, if this was real life, he would just kill the Joker. Like he could have just ended this. He's like, why aren't you killing the Joker? And obviously Batman's answered it before why he won't kill or, you know, why he won't kill anyone. We've done episodes on it. But it's like one of those things. It's like, at what point though, are you like, okay, are you just going to literally the guy could, you know, destroy an entire country and you're like, well, I still can't kill him because that's going to break my rule. You know what I mean? Like if you're, if you're clearly not able to stop him and he's killing people and he's, he's escaping Arkham and he's killing people month after month, year after year. Well, does he not deserve the death sentence? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's a, it's <laughs> yeah. a, re- it's a really interesting. I guess that qu- all depends on how you feel about capital punishment. Yeah. <laughs> <You're> right. <laughs> right. It's, it's a really interesting thing. And it's, it's kind of like, you know, I kind of like going back to three jokers. It's like, maybe red hood has it right. You know what I mean? You, sometimes mm-hmm. someone has to be the quote unquote bad guy, do the dirty work for, you know, to save people. You know, yeah. and again, I don't want to get into it too much with Clown Hunter, but you, we see a lot more of that with Clown Hunter and it hits really close to home. And it's actually really sad because it's like he says to him, if you would have done X, Y and Z, I wouldn't, you know, be alone. And it's it's like, wow, where and it, it kind of ends open ended where, again, we're going to see more of Clown Hunter going forward with uh, the Ghost Maker, who's who, again, that's a crazy tease. He's saying our he says our teacher, Bruce. So this is a guy that Bruce knows. But right. like I'm like okay, so League of Assassins maybe I don't know maybe something new yeah. that is is Tynan gonna add something new to the mythos and be like yeah he trained with the League of Assassins but also there was this all other crazy organization that we never told you about until now I think that would be dope because again I love that kind of stuff to me yeah. <laughs> but kind of like the Court of Owls sort of right thing. it's like oh my god he no wonder he knows this <laughs> because he trained with these people um, but I'm very curious about that and you know we've actually seen a tease for the cover. Uh, issue of uh, 103 of Batman where mm-hmm. the clown hunter is going to be facing off against the ghost maker and on the cover you see Batman trying to stop them so I am very very excited uh, with you know all these characters that uh, Tynan's been creating have been fitting in flawlessly into the Batman universe and you know Cl- clown hunter more so than most is really hitting at the heart of what you know what Batman should do and how he should be Batman and I think that's Again, the best kind of storytelling, just asking questions and letting the audience decide. So yeah. I, I'm very curious to see where he ultimately ends up. Is he going to be like, you know, a part of the Bat family eventually? Is Batman going to have to stop him? Uh, I'm very curious. Yeah. And, I, you know, and it's interesting, too, because a lot of the, the story elements in both Joker War and and I would say even, uh, you know, well, we'll say Joker War specifically because that's what we're talking about. Um, you know, a lot of the story elements seem very like prescient for some of the things that are going on in the world. Mm-hmm. Um, so you can't help, but like see some of that. Right. So I am, I am going to be very interesting or interested to watch and see how he, how he wrangles with these topics and how he plays them 
out through Batman and the Bat family and these new characters he's mm. created. Um, because, you know, it is, it for me, I think even the Clown Hunter, like, you know, the Clown Hunter is a really interesting character. I look forward to getting the origin out to all of you guys uh, mm-hmm. here in the next week or so. Um, but uh, he's a really interesting character, and uh, the same the same with this Ghostmaker character. We don't know anything about him yet. No, but you know, very compelling, especially like you said with the dialogue um, that they gave us with him. Mm-hmm. So it's very compelling and interesting. Um, it's just, they've just a great done the, tease. Yeah, really great tease, and they you know the, the, even. How is the role between the relationship between Bruce uh, and, and Selena Kyle? How is that going to evolve now? Mm-hmm. You know, with you know, especially everything that we saw happen under the Tom King run, um, and now you know she just she's the one who got his fortune back in the in this uh, Joker War story arc, um, and now the changes that Batman is looking to make to improve the way that he behaves as Batman. So, so many different things. I'm really looking forward to see what Tynan ends up doing during his run, just overall. I know. And I mean, again, like he's, he's just doing a, such a good job with creating all these characters, but like the designer, that was another, it's like, that was a character. Mm-hmm. I thought the designer origin was one of the coolest origins I've read in a long time. Like, yeah. And I don't it, know about you, but I, I'm hoping that we're not done with him yet. I know. Right. No, he was so, so clever how, you know, he was this myth amongst the villains in Gotham. Like he was, you know, this, this thing that didn't exist. <laughs> yeah. So, but he, he was, he was actually real and how Batman went to, uh, go to him, track him down or whatever to train with him years later to be the world's greatest detective because he was the world's greatest detective. I thought all of that was really, really, really cool. And then even punchline how she's kind of like a reverse Harley Quinn where she's yeah. not in love with the Joker. She's just totally on board with his like ideals. You know what I mean? Like Absolutely. where Harley Quinn's yeah. like in love and infatuated with the Joker, hence Mr. J. But Punchline's like, this guy's just got the right attitude on the world and life. You know what I mean? I, we, we, we need to make him president and do things his way. So I <laughs> Which like tells how tells you like, everything you need to know about her as a character. Yeah. Right. So I like how one is like, you know, googly eyed in love and the other one's like, no, he's just got really good ideas. So mm-hmm. I, you know, it's cool because it could have easily have been like, oh, she's, it's just the Joker's new girlfriend. It's like, no, she's just, you know, she just likes his uh what he's doing his his outlook yeah. on life he doesn't she doesn't want to like date him or you know be with him she's just like no this is pretty cool so i liked how that was different and yeah, again she's basically a female version of him right 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 i think i just think tynan's been doing a, a a very uh good job with the batman run i think he's the perfect uh successor to scott snyder especially since he kind of came up for scott snyder you way this he was is mentored years, by him yeah. yeah this is years years back but he was mentored back in the day and now he's like one of the best writers out right now. So good on him. Yeah. And, and like, just like Josh Williamson, uh, you know, did with a flash where he created several different characters mm-hmm. and really expanded that a lot. I kind of feel like Tynan's on that course already, uh, just creating a bunch of new characters and really setting Batman out on a new course, What's which I, I think is great. And, and to the punchline, uh, character, um, at the end of the, the Batman 100, we get another secondary story where she kind of, you know, we see that Joker's still alive and, and punchline, um, you know, they show that she's taken all the makeup off and she's now faking like, Oh, the Joker manipulated me. And, uh, and you just see the Joker looking at her going, Oh, she's good. <laughs> <laughs> right. And that's yeah. all leading us of course, to punchline number one coming out. I think it's in uh, November, right. Or end of October. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Which is that says a lot in itself that he created a character that's become so popular. She's already getting her own self title. Exactly. So right. Yeah. that, that that's a lot. I wouldn't be shocked that if clown hunter will soon follow because again, we've only seen him. I think as of now, as of uh joker war, Batman issue 100, we've only seen him like three times briefly. And he wasn't even in the, right. the comics that much, but when he was in it, it was dope. And with his origin that we got at the end of Batman 100 in that one of those short stories, it really set up to be like, Oh, this is going to be good. <laughs> this is very interesting. <laughs> yeah. I keep saying it, but I want him to eventually team up with Red Hood so bad because they kind of more or less have the same mindset, you know, being like that anti-hero because the Clown Hunter isn't bad. He's just killing like all the bad guys, you know, he's exactly not going to kill. Right. He's, he's defending the good people. He's just brutally killing the bad people, which he is basically he's basically taking a page out of Red Hood's book. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's why. And that's why I want them to team up. I that I feel like that would be the perfect team up or in the, for them to to be their own dynamic duo getting like <laughs> a bat book but with that i think we've talked a lot of joker i think we've talked all the joker we could talk for talk about today 
<laughs> we, yeah, we've got all the Joker that you can handle in this episode. And it's crazy. I think, you know, people are always like, it's always Batman. It's always Batman. But I will say for people who are massive Batman fans like me and, and I'm sure you, um, it's a great time to be a Batman fan. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> like, yeah. We got so many good Batman stories. Uh, I know the Batman got delayed to 2022, which sucks. But I think people are forgetting we're still on on track to get the Snyder Cut. Uh, next year because most That's of that right. is, is already shot i believe he said that he does need two weeks to get ben affleck el Gadot, uh and i believe henry cavill back in to do a little bit of uh, pickup shots but we're still on track to get it early next year so fret not yeah, thank god for fret, streaming yeah, services. yeah 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 get, thank god for <laughs> snyder and hbo max <laughs> yeah for real good lord but uh other than that guys that's gonna do it for today's podcast and we'll talk to you next time when we talk about all things comics 